This is section 2.7, which is going to start talking about graphing techniques. So this is where we get into the basic graphs, but then putting those multiples A and those adding and subtracting of another value and then seeing what that does to it. If it throws them some negative somewhere, what does that do to the graph? Um, that kind of thing. Um, we don't really do even odd functions in this class, so we're going to But let's go ahead and get started. So we have stretching and shrinking. And so they basically want us to see what happens to the regular graph if I put these numbers in particular places, okay? Um, and really I don't know why they have this here. Um, it's not really going to do anything because when you square this, don't you have 1 half x times 1 half x, which is just 1 fourth x squared, which means it's really the same thing as what's happening up there, just a different fraction in front. So I'm not necessarily going to work out this example, um, but we'll um, continue with the rest of it. So I just noticed I... did not take pictures of this before I started. So sorry about that. Um, let me go ahead and pause the video real quick while I do this. Okay, all set. I wanted to make sure that I had the right copies in case there were anyone who wanted to um, print this before we start scribbling all over it um, and then write in their own Thing when they um, watch the video. So now that we got that, I'll again I'll take photos of it afterward as well. So here, if I draw the normal x squared, now remember from the basic function, what they did was they plugged in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So let me grab my color pencils so that we could see the difference between what we have there and then what we get when there's a 2 in front of all of that. So, there they are. They were hiding. Okay, so what I'm going to draw is I'm going to draw the original in blue and then I'll draw the, the, um, old, the new one in red. So here, if I plug in, if I'm just doing y equals x squared, I get 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4. So I'm going to draw those in blue. So 0, 0, 1, 1, um, 2, 4, 1, 0, 0, 1, and negative 2, 4. And so this was the original graph. I'm horrible at drawing, but you get the idea. Okay, now we're going to draw this one. So I'm going to use those same x values, and I'm going to plug them into this function. So that's 4, that's 8, that's 2, 0, 2, and 8. So now I'm going to plug in these. And all I do is plug in negative 2 in there. How do I do that? In the calculator, I do 2 parentheses squared, and I just plug in negative 2 in there. I plug in negative 1 in there, I plug in 0, 1, and 2, right? Now let's go ahead and trace or graph these. So negative 2 and 8. I think this was an arrow. Yeah. Negative 2 and 8, negative 1 and 2, 0 and 0, 1, 2, and 2 and 8. And so now we have 2 and 8 and 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 function here first just so we can compare it 
and then we'll see what multiplying by a fraction will do to the graph, okay? So let's use the same x values and we're plugging them into here. So negative two squared is actually four and half of four is two. One squared is one, so I still have a half. A half times zero is zero. And then two squared is four and a half of that is two. So let's plot those. So negative two and two, negative one and a half, zero, zero, one and a half, and then two and two. Oops, two and two. Maybe in the corner there. So what did that one do? That one made it like open up more, right? It made it, this one is called getting narrower. And then this one is what they call wider, okay? So if you multiply by a number bigger than one, it makes the graph go up faster, which makes it look skinnier or narrower. If your um, number that you multiply in front is less than one, then it'll make it like open up and look wider, okay? So that's basically what they were showing us there for stretching and shrinking. This one's considered a stretch and this one's considered a shrinking. Now, it says vertical stretching or shrinking of a graph. So if the number that you multiply in front of your basic graph, that will cause a vertical stretching. And if the number is a fraction, then, or not necessarily a fraction, because four thirds is a fraction, that's bigger than one still. But if it's a fraction that's less than one or a decimal that's less than one, then it's going to do a vertical shrinking, okay? So this one will make it look narrower, and this one will make it look wider. Now, horizontal stretching and shrinking pretty similar. We don't really do a whole lot with that in this class, but it does exist. And that's if you were multiplying, that's kind of like that one problem where it had the one fourth X or one half X squared. Okay. Um, because of the one half in there, it would actually do what's called a horizontal stretching, which means instead of it getting narrow or wide this way, they're looking at it across. Okay. And so when you get, um, when you horizontally stretch, that means that it's going to go outward like that more. So this one actually gets wider and then this one actually gets narrower. It's like the opposite, um, but you don't really need to um, consider that because you already have it included in the information up here, okay? So we already know Horizontal stretching is the same as getting wide, but we already have that represented by the vertical shrinking, okay? And it's the same thing here. Remember there was a one half there. It still resulted in a one fourth, which still put me here, which made the graph wider. But when it's a half on the inside, this is saying that if it's less than one, it should horizontally shrink, which also means that it gets wider. So we kind of already have these things represented. So we don't really do a whole lot with them. I think the only time you're gonna need this information is like the first question in the homework. It basically asks you, when does it do this? When does it do that? When does it do this? When does it do that? And so you have to know this information that if you put the number on the inside and it's less than one, it horizontally stretches. If you put the number on the inside and it's bigger than one, then it horizontally shrinks, okay? Other than that one problem, we're probably not gonna see this topic a whole lot. Um, it's like a matching problem, so you'll be able to figure that out. Now, here we're going to talk about reflecting. So what happens if we throw in negatives, okay? So just like before, I want to talk about the basic function, which is just the absolute value of x. And what did that look like, right? And I'm going to draw that one in blue, um, and then we'll compare it to the other ones. So here I'm going to do 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 1, negative 2, 2, 
So it's just the V shape. And I'm going to do the same thing here since it's the same parent function. Okay, now we're going to actually graph this one in red. So let me make the table with the same x values. And now I'm going to plug them in here. So even though I'm taking the absolute value of negative 2, I'm going to take the opposite of that. So it turns out being negative 2. Negative 1, 0. Negative 1, negative 2. Um, and let me see in your calculator. Because here you would have to do it by hand by taking the absolute value of things. But I could have sworn Nope, your calculator does not take the absolute value of things. So you have to do it by hand. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking negative, negative 2. I'm evaluating this the absolute value of negative 2, which is 2, and then this guy is just coming along for the ride, and that's why the result is negative 2. If I plug in negative 1, again this is 1, but the negative is coming along. Here if I put 0, I get 0 with the negative, but there's no such thing as negative 0, it's just 0. And then here with 1, Absolute value of 1 is 1, but the negative is still there. And then 2, absolute value of 2 is 2, but the negative is still there. So that's where all of these values came from. Now over here, we're going to do the same chart with the same x values, but now I'm plugging them into there. So negative, or I'm sorry, negative is on the inside now. So it's bar negative negative 2. We'll have to compute what's on the inside, which is positive 2, and then that's positive 2. Negative 1. The inside is positive 1, which comes out as positive 1. The inside is just 0, which is still 0. The inside is going to be a negative 1. Oops, these should be bars. Which is positive 1. I made a mistake here. Absolute value of 1 is positive 1. And then plug in 2. That's going to be negative 2, but the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. So I get 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. So let's plot these and see what happens. For this one, we have um, negative 2 and negative 2 negative 1 and negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 2. And so now it's going in this direction. And then here we have negative 2 and 2, negative 1 and 1, 0 and 0, 1 and 1, and it actually lands right on top of itself. Okay? so. Here's what's happening, although it's not evident with this particular basic function. But if the negative is on the outside, what it does is it takes what's in blue and it reflects it over the x-axis. See, this is the x-axis. And you see how what there, what's there in blue flipped over and it now became what's here in red. Now, over here, it actually does flip, but it flips over the y-axis. So basically this blue part flipped over here and became this red part. And then the blue part that was on the left flipped over and became the red part that's on the right. So they are, um, they are both reflections. It's just this one you can't really tell what exactly is being reflected there um, because it landed right on top of itself and it's already symmetric. Now let's go ahead and talk about reflecting. So here's the little box. Um, it says if the negative is outside the basic function, then the basic function will get reflected across the x-axis. And then that means that all the y values basically change signs. Okay, So the y values that were up here now become down here, right? Now 
if the basic function has a negative on the inside, it's going to reflect it across the y-axis, which basically means all the x-coordinates are going to change signs. So if your x value was on the right, now it's going to move to the left and vice versa. Okay, so that's the little summary there for reflections. Now for translations. So translations are when we add or subtract numbers, okay? So we know what happens. We get stretching and shrinking when we multiply by numbers. We get uh, reflections or flipping going on when we're putting negatives in there, multiplying by negatives. But now what happens if we add or subtract, okay? So this one is the basic graph y equals x squared. So again, I want to put the y equals x squared just as a reference so we can see what translating does to it. Um, that would be 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. So 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. And then we're going to draw that one there and that one there. Now let's do this one. So we have x, we have y, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. If we plug each of these values in here, remember you're plugging them into parentheses. So then I get negative 2 squared, which is 4 plus 2 is 6. That'll be 3. That'll be 0, 3, and 6. So now let's graph this. So we have negative 2 and 6, negative 1 and 3, 0, oops, I messed up. This shouldn't be 0, 0. 0 squared is 0, and 0 plus 2 is 2. Again, I'm horrible at drawing, but I'm trying my best there. Now notice that the curvature of this thing did not change. It's not wider or narrower than the other one, okay? They're pretty much the same. But what has happened is I've taken what was in blue and I've shifted it up two units. So it was here at zero, now it's at two. All the points have gone up two units. See, this point's gone up two units, that point has gone up two units. So the whole thing just shifted upward. <clears throat> and that's one of the vertical translations. Now, that's a vertical translation. So if you add a number on the outside, what ends up happening is all the y values will go up one, but if you minus a number here, so it's, if, you, if that number is negative, then it would look like f of x minus c, right, some number. And then in that case, the minus means it would go down, and then whatever the number is, absolute value means ignore the sign. So the sign tells you it's going down, the number tells you how many units it's going down, okay? And those are called vertical translations. Now, let's see what happens if we add or subtract the number inside the basic function. So again, I'm gonna draw the regular one in blue, and then we'll compare the new one in red. So we have 0, 1, 4, and we have that there and that there. And now I'm going to do same x values. Now these have all been using x squared as the basic function, but you could have any of these functions as your basic function and all these translations and stretches and shrinks and reflections they all do the same thing to any of the basic graphs now here let's see so we plug in negative 2 that means negative 2 plus 4 squared so it's actually 2 squared which is 4 if I do negative 1 plus 4 squared I get 3 squared right which is 9 when I do 0 plus 4 squared I get 4 squared which is 16 
And then when I do 1 plus 4 squared, I get 5 squared, which is 25. And then 2, that's going to get too big. I'm going to get to 36. So let's try. Notice how they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, I need to try on the other side of this. So let's try negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and see what happens. These are too big. I can't graph them. So what happens if I plug in... We had positive 2, but we got a big number. It would have been like 36, okay? Which we still can't graph. So let's try negative 3. Negative 3 plus 4 squared would be 1 squared, which is 1. Now we're getting smaller. Negative 4 plus 4 squared would be 0 squared, which is 0. Um, negative 5 plus 4 squared would be negative 1 squared, which is 1. Um, oh yeah, now it's starting to do it. Now let's do a couple more so we can get some symmetry going on in here. Um, negative 6 plus 4 squared is negative 2 squared, which is 4. And then negative 7 plus 4 squared is going to be negative 3 squared, which is 9. So let's see what we got here. We've got negative 2 in red. Um, negative 2 and 4, negative 1 and 9, um, negative 3 and 1, negative 4 and 0, negative 5 and 1, negative 6 and 4, and negative 7 and 9. Okay, so it is making the same shape there. I'm not going to go all the way up to the 9, just so you can see it for comparison. Um, it is the same exact shape. All it did was take every single one of these points and shift it over to the left 4 units. So putting this plus 4 in there, shifted it to the left 4 units. So this is interesting though. Notice that what they have in the basic is minus C. This is going to play into why these functions do essentially the opposite of what we think they're going to do. So if you have something that looks like f of x, x minus C, the minus is not included in the representation. You're just looking at C and that'll make the graph move to the left, okay? But if you see something, so basically like this, if you see F of X minus C, it'll go to the, it'll go, actually it's this one. This is always backwards, so it always gets confusing. So if it's f of x minus c, no, I had it right the first time. No, I had it right, no. f of x minus c will go to the right, and f of x plus c will go to the left. And that's evident here, right? We had um, x plus 4 up here, and notice it went to the left, right? But if you had a minus 4, then the whole thing would have shifted to the right 4. So these are a little bit backwards. Now, I know for right now, the chart has it looking a little bit confusing but um, when we get to the summaries we'll kind of be able to put it all together and it'll make a little bit more sense so there's one of the summaries it's not the final summary but this is a summary of the translations so if you're adding a number on the outside then it's gonna go up if you're subtracting a number on the outside it's gonna go down if you're adding a number on the inside of the basic function, it goes to the left. And if you're subtracting a number inside the basic function, it's going to go to the right. So we're going to use this information to draw these graphs, okay? So I'm going to draw the original. Now what is the basic graph for this function? It's y equals x squared. So that's the one that I'm going to draw in the blue. I 
just noticed how long this video is. So after this example, I'll do the next one in another video. Now what we're going to do is we're going to describe all the different transformations happening here. So this one is a reflection. Okay. So that means we're going to have a reflection over the x-axis because it's outside. This minus one on the inside is going to make it move to the right one unit. And this plus four on the outside is going to make it go up four units. So we have to do, think of your orders of operations. You always have to do your multiplication before you can do your adding and subtracting. So you have to actually flip first before you um, start shifting. Okay, so then what we're gonna do with these points is we're gonna take this point at two, four, we're gonna reflect it over. So instead of being positive four, it's gonna be at two and negative four. Then from there, we're gonna move it to the right and then up four units, one, two, three, four. So I landed here at the very end. Now I'm gonna do the next thing with this point. It's at positive one Y value, it's gonna flip over down to negative one, then move to the right, and then go up one, two, three, four. So that's this point here. Now I'm gonna move on to zero, zero. So if I flip it over the X axis, basically this, the little dot goes like this, <laughs> but it's still in the same, the same spot. So I'm gonna move it to the right and then I'm gonna go up one, two, three, four. Then now this spot, so I'm gonna flip it over to negative one, go to the right, up one, two, three, four. And then finally the last point, flip it downward so it's at negative four, go to the right one and then up one two three four and so now I have this graph okay so it's flipped over it's shifted to the right one and it's shifted up four okay so now we have what this one here so what is happening it is getting reflected over the x-axis because of the minus sign. It is getting stretched by a factor of two, which basically means my y values are gonna get multiplied by two. Um, so I gotta do this first, do this second, and then third, it has this in the inside, the plus three on the inside, which means it's going to go to the left three units so let me draw oh I forgot the basic function the basic function is the absolute value of X so let's draw the absolute value of X the absolute value of 0 is 0 absolute value of 1 is 1 absolute value of 2 is 2 absolute value of negative 1 is 1 absolute value of negative 2 is 2 and so I have this V shape and so now we're going to start doing this situation here so start with this one, make it negative. It's down here at negative two. And then um, stretch it, which means that negative two value is gonna get multiplied by two. So now it's gonna be negative four. And then move it to the left, one, two, three. Now this point here, reflect it over. If we multiply negative one by two, we get negative two. And then shift it, one, two, three. Now the zero, zero, if I reflect it over the x-axis, it's still at zero, zero. If I multiply zero by two, I still get zero, but I have to shift it over three. Now this point, if I flip it over, I'm down here at negative one. If I multiply it by two, I get negative two, and then shift one, two, three. And then here, if I flip it downward, it's gonna be at negative two. If I multiply that by two, I get to negative four and then shift one, two, three. And so it should still have that V shape, but notice that it's downward because of the negative. It's more narrow because of the two and it's shifted over to the left because of the plus three inside the basic function. Okay. 
okay? Now let's take this one. Here the basic function is the square root of x. There's no reflecting, but I do have the, the shrink uh, by factor one half, um, which means I still multiply my y values by one half, which really is dividing by two. Um, then I'm going to do this here, which plus two on the inside means I go left two. And then the minus three on the outside means I'm going to go down four, or down three, I'm sorry. So let's do that. Now let's graph the regular x squared first. Zero, or the square root. The square root of zero is zero, square root of one is one, square root of four is two. And so it's going like this. Now let's take each of those points and do this thing to it. So 0 times 1 half y value is still 0. And then shifted 1, 2 to the left and 1, 2, 3 downward. Now 1, if I multiply that by a half, I get a half. And then shift to the left 2 and then down 1, 2, 3. So I'm like right here in the middle. I'm not on a corner, I'm just right there in the middle. Then the last one is this one. So if I take the y value is two, if I take half of that, I get one and then go left one, two, and go down one, two, three. And so then we get this graph. So notice it's um, not as narrow as this one, it's a little bit it's just, it's, it's shrunk. It's not going up as fast, it's going up slower. And it um, is definitely moved over two and shifted down three. So let me stop there because the video is already 30 minutes long. It just kept going and going and going. My apologies. You can always pause and stop wherever you need to.